Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I have such a fun dyeing project, dyeing experiment for you. I have no idea how well it's gonna work, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. Before I jump into the project, I wanna give a huge shout out and happy birthday to today's lab partner, Jeanette. Jeanette, thank you so much for being my lab partner today, and happy birthday! Now, with a cold winter birthday, as I can identify, I'm a December baby, it's wonderful to curl up with your knitting or crocheting, a nice little project, and a nice warm cup of tea. Now, I'm personally partial to like a chai tea, but today we're gonna try a fun tea to dye our yarn. And we're gonna be using the uh, pea flower tea, which went viral on TikTok probably or Instagram a while ago because it is a pH sensitive pigment. And so when you add, say, acid to your tea, the color will shift. Now, how will this work on yarn? Well, I don't know. And that's why we're doing this experiment today. Now, in the past, I've dyed yarn with tea and had lovely results with more, a lot of browns, but some a little bit more pink, some a little bit more yellow. So we did get some beautiful range using various tea bags that I had. But one other pigment that is pH sensitive that I've done in the past is red cabbage. And that I knew was a fugitive dye, which means that over time it will leave the yarn. So Jeanette, I know this is a video you really, really wanted to see, which is why it is the one planned for your birthday. Uh, I have no idea what the yarn will be like. My guess, my less optimistic guess is we'll end up with some kind of tonal beige -ish tan that is gonna be very neutral, very pretty, but I'm hoping for more. But I'm setting my expectations low and I'm hoping to be like over the moon excited. Because honestly, you never know how something will turn out unless you try it. But I think I've babbled enough. And before we go and try to do this with yarn, let's make a cup of tea. I just opened up the bag and I will say it does smell a little bit pea adjacent. Not quite like snap pea crisps, but yeah, that's sort of where where my brain goes. Okay, so for my personal glass of tea, we're gonna add, I was gonna put these in like a tea strainer thing, but let's do, it says two to three. I'm gonna do four. We'll do four pieces. And when the water is hot, then we'll steep it. All right, let's see what we got. I'm gonna pour in my water and I did a little more so I'll be at a little over a cup. Um, I'm so curious how pigmented this is but oh my gosh. Okay this is cool. I'm gonna see if I can turn it uh, so you can see the color. Look at this you can just see the tendrils of the color coming down. That is so cool. Oh man, now I'm debating what my plan. Even in a minute from picking the camera back up, the color got a lot deeper um, from just, I think I only had four flowers in here. And so it said to let it steep for two to five minutes. I have, I think two and a half minutes left on the timer. That's probably gonna be close to about five minutes because of the time before I started the timer. But I will say, I am very happy with the amount of color I'm seeing in the water here from just four blossoms. Uh, that is really good news when it comes to dyeing yarn because you need to have a lot of pigment. And so if we had a very pastel color here, then that might be more problematic. So I'm going to have to think about how much of this we'll use when we go dye the yarn. So I was going to use the whole bag. But maybe I don't need to. Maybe we'll try with less and that'll give me a chance to do something twice. But anyway, I'll be back in one and a half minutes. All right, I'm gonna remove the flowers, which honestly still look like they have a fair amount of pigment in them. I think that if you're doing this for natural dyeing versus for a beverage, you might be able to leave them in longer. So maybe after we steep our tea for the yarn, we'll add it into a secondary pot and see if we get more color out. 
The concern is always that it might turn brown if you leave it too, too long. Before I taste this, I need it to cool a bit. It's a bit too warm for me to drink. So we'll do a taste, we'll add acid, maybe I'll add Splenda, and then we'll get to the yarn, but I gotta try it. All right, let's see what I think. It does smell a little bit just like peas. <laughs> It doesn't have a lot of flavor, actually. Um, it tastes like a really weak broth or soup. I think that if you want more flavor from the flowers, you probably will want more. But that's not bad. I am not even missing sugar or anything because it's not sour, it's not bitter. I suppose if you let it steep too long, then maybe it would be bitter. But now let's add some acid and see the magic. Oh, a little bit of lime juice. Is that enough? I do see a little bit of a color shift uh, here. Ooh, it's sort of sinking to the bottom. Let me show you the side. Do you kind of see that purple near the bottom? That's pretty cool. Let me bring the tripod over this angle. It's already a little bit purple. If I stir it, it is a lot more purple than it was. Let's add even more like a good old squirt of lime juice. And whoa, with it stirring now, it is pink. That is very pink, a very dramatic color shift. So can you imagine what I might wanna be doing with yarn? But let's try this now with the lime juice. I've had lemon tea before, never lime tea. I do like the color. I find that to be very pleasing. I mean, I put a lot of lime in it. It tastes like lime with a hint of something. Like I definitely taste tea or tea adjacent to something. The lime is definitely coming through the most and I kind of like it. There's something to it. It is still very, very subtle. Probably went a little bit more. Um, maybe if you steeped it longer, it would get better, but I have a feeling this is really fun and dramatic because of the color change more than the flavor. But anyway, enough about me making tea. Let's make a big tea. This bag of tea was about $15 when I bought it. It is $17 to $18 now, which is maybe would sound like a lot for only three and a half ounces, but it's this huge bag. And I believe it when it says there's 50 servings because if you're only using a couple flowers at a time, that just makes sense. But how much do we want to use on our yarn? I've got this big mesh fruit washing bag here. And let's just do a rough measurement. So that's about half a cup, one cup. Well, I'll just roughly measure and then we'll know in case I need to order more or something. Uh, I could do this by weight, but I figured we may as well do by volume. Okay, maybe? You know what, let's just start with two cups. Two cups of the pigment. And now I'm going to convert my kitchen from a kitchen kitchen to a dying kitchen. And we're gonna make a big old tea. This is my four inch deep full size catering steam pan. And the reason why I'm planning to steep the tea with this bag, this happens to be one I've never used for any other natural dyeing, is that way we can remove a lot of the plant matter from the pan. But my thought and my plan here is to I'm boiling a tea kettle. I'm going to pour that over this, uh, let it steep for five minutes, remove the plant. Then we're going to add the yarn and uh, play around a little bit. So yeah, that's, that's my plan. All right. My kettle is hot. I suppose the one downside to doing things this way is that, uh, I'm not measuring out the volume of water necessarily but I'm pouring this hot boiling water from a tea kettle on. And again, I haven't measured what my tea kettle holds, but this looks like it could be, oh, look at that color, uh, four, uh, I don't think it's quite eight cups. It could be anywhere between four and eight cups, maybe. Maybe closer to six, but that is a lot of pigment and we haven't had much time yet. So could this work? 
We're super, super steamy. I am gonna go ahead and let this steep for five minutes. Uh, and we're not gonna toss it. We'll steep it in some more water to extract more pigment, but that is a lot of pigment. A lot more pigment than you often will see from tea. So, Jeanette, again, I don't know if we're gonna end up with blue or with pink. Okay, I'll, I'll be back when we're done steeping. This color is so dark. I mean, tell me this is an extreme blue that we're looking at here. Now, just off to the side, I have a dyed kettle uh, because now that our five minutes are up and I'm gonna remove this glorious tea bag, um, I'm gonna drain as much of the liquid as I can easily, but I'm gonna place the, the yarn into this kettle, sorry, the tea into this kettle, and I'm gonna cover it with some more water. Um, and yeah, that's a lot, I mean, less pigment than what we saw over there, but I'm gonna let this steep here in the kettle because if we need more liquid, then we will add that from here and I'm like really squeezing squeezing the tea I have no idea if this would stay in my skin that's why I've put on gloves and I'm gonna go heat this off camera just to extract more pigment since we're dying yarn we don't care if it will add a bitter taste or anything from over steeping for our yarn today, we are going to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid. And I am going to go and quickly add on some uh, removable nylon zip ties, some brand new ones that have no color on them yet, uh, so that way any colors we know will be coming from our tea. And I'm going to pre-soak them for, I don't know, at least 20 minutes so they're nice and saturated. And as for our tea here, um, I'm gonna bring over our yarn. And I want to attempt, let's see, okay, it's not that warm. Oh my gosh, I don't think that this color is gonna stay. But if it does, and it could be temporary if it does, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous denim blue that we see right here. The, the smell, the, the smell is strong. <laughs> the smell is strong. Uh, I don't think I want to turn on heat yet. I'm afraid that the color will turn brown. Again, it's not that warm, but we'll see also what happens in the pot that I'm heating up on the side uh, to know what we may want to do. But one thing I do know that I want to do, ooh, and I feel like the color isn't coming through on camera very well. Let me turn off that light. I feel like on the monitor, I'm seeing some like reds in there. It is a very, very blue. Um, I'm gonna take a picture on my phone because sometimes it does a better job with color accuracy. No, but even then I'm seeing like purple. I'm trying to capture the color that I see, this beautiful denim blue. Okay, now, now this is feeling accurate. Okay, but now, I wanna add some acid. So I'm gonna come in with some vinegar. Oh my gosh. And I've just added two tablespoons of white vinegar to this end. And see what happened immediately? Oh my goodness, I am working this through. But I'm not planning on adding acid to the whole thing, just to the end and we'll add some more i'm curious if we'll notice that the acid travels all the way down um over the course of doing this let's do i think that's going to bring a total of six tablespoons of white vinegar and i am just going to work this in not even going halfway but just to try to within these regions uh, get it. And so you know when I've done a few videos with asymmetric acid in the past? Uh, in those we didn't really have a good visual indicator of where the acid had gone, what it was doing. Today we do. Today we definitely do. 
Uh, so we'll be able to see, I'm not going to do a time lapse, but we'll be able to see with time if we end up seeing more pink down there. What's more likely is we might see some go down the edges. I think we're more likely to see that once we turn the heat on, but I don't want to turn the heat on because I want to see what the heat does in the other pan because I know from experience with some natural dyes, if you heat things too much, it just, the pigment breaks down, um, which is probably indicative of a fugitive dye anyway, but oh my gosh, this is so cool. I frequently struggle with photographing purples, but I still think there's too much pink in what I see on camera because this right here is feeling almost violet to me. And this is very, not pink as much as purple. And that is very, like, there's almost a grayness to it that is lovely. Um, so far, it looks like my reserve tea bag is looking nice and blue. It's not at a boil yet, but we'll check back in soon. The 10 minutes are up and I figured I'd share a little clip before moving the camera uh, to see where things are now. Ooh, I'm, I think that maybe the closet is spread a tiny bit, but I'm not sure. But let's go check my little tea bag. Here we go. This has been simmering for a bit and is in that lovely, lovely blue. So I think that I can probably heat the other yarn without too much of an issue. Um, I'm going to continue to just simmer this on low. Maybe we'll add, eventually add some yarn to it. I don't know. I haven't decided. Okay, but as for here, I'm turning on the stove. We're on two burners on my stove top. And they are very similarly sized. And so we're going to heat this up. And I think I'm going to heat it for about 30 minutes. But I'm going to try not to move or touch the yarn much. With any kind of natural dyeing project, I do not expect the colors to clear. It might happen. That happens with yellow onion skins. But it's not very likely to happen. So the goal is to apply some heat and then we're going to let it sit overnight uh, to just absorb whatever color we possibly can. Now you may wonder about the acid content. We've added acid down here, not up there. I don't think in the past when I've dyed yarn with tea, I added acid. Acid is needed for acid dyes uh, in order to, for those dyes to bind to the yarn. But acid isn't necessarily required for natural pigments. Sometimes a mordant might be required, uh, which is a metal ion that will help bind. A lot of colored pigments have a lot of these rings in them that bind really well to metal ions. So if you have a mordant in there that helps the color sort of connect with the wool is a way, I guess, that I can quickly explain how I at least anticipate that that's working. And so it's possible we might want to try using a mordant to see if we get uh, more color binding, but it really does just depend on the pigment. And so we'll see what we get. I doubt still that this beauty is what the final yarn will look like. I can hope, but again, we will see and we don't know if we try. I don't want to be negative, but again, I don't know exactly what will happen. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on it. It's, we're getting nice and steamy and I'll check in after 30 minutes. It's been about eight minutes and I'm definitely seeing a creep of the acid moving down the yarn. And in fact, this is looking a little bit less pink. The color overall is becoming a little bit softer. Okay. I let things get a little too steamy. We're a little too steamy. Still plenty of water, but you can see the color has even out, evened out a lot. Um, so that actually gives us some really fun info, uh, just in general about how like acid spreads. And we've seen how like when things are added cold, things stay where they are and then they move more once there is heat. Um, in terms of color, things are still more blue down there. I'm wondering if things feel less pigmented over here with the acid. It's possible. Things definitely feel a little paler, but I don't know if maybe more things are soluble with a little acid. I'm not really sure. But what I'm going to do now is I am going to turn off the heat, leave the yarn here in the pan to cool completely. 
completely. I'm not sure. It's certainly chilly. It's winter, right? I, I may not leave it all the way overnight, but I might also, just in case some things will happen <laughs> uh, before we go and rinse it. But let's go check out my other teapot. So this has been steeping for a while. And actually the flowers are starting to look a little more pastel. I'll show that maybe later, but I want to add a skein of Dry Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Uh, I have not added any acid in here, but look at that blue. That is just so pretty, so pretty. And I would say that there's probably less pigment than what we had originally in the other pan, but I'm also only adding 100 grams of yarn. And we're, I guess we're functionally dip dyeing it by adding it slowly. What I'm curious about is if I squeeze out, you know, it's looking a little blue on there. So there's, <laughs> is there a chance? Um, there's a chance that a lot of the color will rinse out for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, but as we add this all, and again, the heat is still on, it's on really, really low. I mean, I see no reason to not leave the bag in here. Uh, why don't we do this? And, you know, it's not going to be a same, like, the best, like, acid plus no acid comparison. Let me get some more water. And the reason why it's not going to be the best comparison is that we have different amounts of pigment. Who knows if for steeping longer and without those original colors, uh, if we're going to be seeing something different. Our water volumes are also quite different. Uh, you see me adding more water just now, then of course it diluted all of that pigment and made things more pastel looking. But this one, this yarn, we can touch and move. And so, yeah, I would say if I squeeze it out, I mean, it's been in for not very long. Uh, a lot is coming back out, but I mean, that's not that surprising. So I don't know, I'm gonna increase the heat. We may end up adding acid in here. Um, I might choose to do that, but for now, uh, I'm gonna heat this, I think, for 15 minutes and we'll come and peek. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. I heated it for 30 minutes and turned off the heat. And you can see there's a ton of pigment in here. I have no idea if this will stain my hands, but it does look like, if I come in, of course, now that I got it wet again, it looks like now, if you look at our pulp of flowers, that, ooh, oh, interesting. <laughs> They've definitely broken down a bit and there doesn't seem like there's a lot of pigment left in here. So I would say at this stage that we have pretty successfully extracted all of the pigment. And the yarn is warm. Um, ooh, there's almost, it almost feels like there's a reddishness to it. The yarn is warm. It isn't hot. Let's see. I mean, if I squeeze it out, that is looking blue still, which is pretty cool. Again, I don't know if it'll oxidize. I don't know how much of it will rinse out. But what's left in here, so I didn't add acid. Oh no, it's still blue, but there are definitely, I see some like almost reddish notes in the liquid. So I'm glad that we had this one that we could move around a bit. I think I'm gonna leave it in here to cool and maybe just hang out <laughs> for a little while longer to give us the best chance possible that we will retain some amount of color. There's definitely a shadow that on camera is making things look way different. Yeah, I mean, we've got like the purple and the blue. Some of the water is definitely evaporating, but it's definitely cold and room temperature now, but I don't wanna wash it yet. I want to just let this be, and I think we'll try to wash it tomorrow. First, we are going to wash our yarn that had no acid in here. This was the second brewing of the tea, so we also might have less pigment overall. 
And just to demonstrate, there was so much pigment in there. Oh my gosh. Uh, but we did heat this for 30 minutes. Oh, there's a lot of color coming out. We heated it for 30 minutes, and then um, that color coming out, there was a beautiful peel. After heating for 30 minutes, then we just let it sit overnight. So it is the next day. But I have a feeling we're in for a lot of washing. I'm gonna add some clear dish soap, which does have a grapefruit scent. And normally I try to wash yarn with unscented soap, but I'm actually a little grateful for the grapefruit scent because it smells planty. Not bad, just smells like a plant. Let's see how we're doing. I mean, the yarn is blue. It's gotta be a fugitive dye. I imagine, unfortunately, it might fade. I could be pleasantly surprised, but this is weird. Okay, and so then I have to wonder, is there, could there possibly be food coloring in this? <laughs> you can see I'm feeling suspicious. I mean, where was this made? This product of Thailand. Um, it was manufactured in Thailand, so it's possible that the labeling rules are different. But it is peat sensitive, and so it is very possible that these flowers do that. But I'm really confused and shocked because I've never, like, I've had a blue before from black beans. My jaw is still just like on the floor because historically blue pigments were so and purple pigments were so hard to get from plants that they were worth so so much money and so I mean I don't know <laughs> I don't know uh, I am gonna go and look this up but we're clear so I am floored. I'm gonna soak this in my, I'm just gonna go do a Google search because I hadn't done that yet. All right, a brief Google search brought me to just another blog um, where someone had dyed yarn or fabric with the these flowers and they got a similar color to what I did, but they said that with exposure to sunlight, the color faded with time. Not immediately, but it did fade. So this is likely a fugitive dye. Um, but there's a chance that if you store it inside like a closet while it's not being worn, that maybe the color will last longer. So I have not observed any fading from any of the things I've dyed with natural dyes when they've been sitting in my shop stock. And some of them have been there for a while. Um, but that's also inside a plastic container, inside a closet. So a bit different but i'm gonna go put this in my spin dryer to wait for the rest of the yarn and we'll start washing that so here's the yarn before washing that we dyed with the acid and we can see it's a little more blue and a little more purple down there so i'm curious if we'll feel like we have different hues once we wash it i do remember with the red cabbage that we did have slightly different hues after washing um but it was it was slight it was subtle now, this time a lot of the liquid was in the yarn, so I have a feeling that as we rinse it, uh, yes, we will have a lot of color coming out just immediately. But right now, I am seeing a, a hue difference in between the two ends. It's very subtle, but it's there. Oh my goodness. I'm going to add a bunch of soap. I also want to add that I'm really glad I didn't Google if this worked before I did the project. I would much rather be happily surprised with how the results are than see something didn't work well and then be underwhelmed the entire time. Does that make sense? I mean, I think if it didn't work, then I would have gone and looked up how to do it to try to get better results, but man, that's so cool.
I will say it did seem to work a little bit on cotton from the one other person's uh, project that I saw. It was um, not as vibrant as on the silk fabric they guys, but it seems like that could work. Now, if I remember correctly with the red cabbage, there was some different hints of color, even though it almost completely washed out. There were different undertones. So, I mean, I am floored with this depth of color in here. Now, are we seeing more vibrant color because this was the first brew or because we added acid? And I don't have an answer for you there. I mean, I guess we'll be able to see if this darker end feels like there's more color in there um, than the lighter end, but it's possible that there is a colored pigment that comes out with the very first, I guess, soak, and then there's other pigments that take longer to extract. And so there could be differences in there. And I say this from some experience as a natural product biochemist and research I did while working on my PhD. <laughs> but, oh man, this is so cool. There's definitely a color difference. And it feels, there's a light patch that was on the bottom. Um, and there are some deeper patches of the blue. So I don't think the saturation is as much from from the pH differences, but I think that I did move the yarn more where there was vinegar to distribute that um, through that end, and so I think that the color might be a little more even down there. But we're still seeing color come out. I'm gonna add a bit more soap. But for all we're seeing color come out in the water, it's not coming out of the yacht. So, again, I'm floored. <laughs> so I'm gonna fill up this basin um, let it soak a little bit, and then we'll check back in. Whew, it is cold outside, so I need to give my hands a little bit of a break with the washing. Oh my gosh, okay, we're still seeing a lot of color come out. Much more pigment than we saw before, and I don't think that it's the acid to blame. I think that it's a, it could be the fiber content, I suppose. Maybe it's, this is more absorbent, I don't know. But what is the most likely culprit here is the fact that this was the first brew of the tea. And so if you've ever made coffee or tea and reused a tea bag, you know that even if you get a lot of color, what you see, the second brewing from the tea bag is less strong. <laughs> it does not have as much flavor or anything. We're getting lighter. It's possible more comes out with soap. But the fact that for all we're seeing bleeding, as we rinse this, we are still seeing a lot of color in the yarn, means that we've got something pretty washed back here, which is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Even if this will fade in sunlight, this is still mind blowing. Uh, so I'm gonna continue to wash this off camera and I'll pop back in once our water is clear. All right, this is just one rinse later, and we're clear. Oh my gosh, and we've got so much color in here. Ah! All right, I'm going to put it through my spin dryer, hang it to dry, and now let's go see the finished yarn. Oh, Jeanette, this turned out way better than I could have ever hoped. Oh my goodness, after the yarn has dried, we still have a very, it's a muted blue, but it's very much blue going into a purple. Those color shifts that we got by adding acid just to one side of the pan stayed because we definitely feel more red in here. It also feels like there's more pigment over here, to be fair, but it's definitely more red as well. And so, gosh, I can think of a lot of other experiments that would be fun to do with this tea. We could try dip dyeing. The color didn't exhaust, but I wonder if we would get some kind of gradient in there. Uh, I'm not sure, but whatever it is, we still got a lot of pigment from our second brewing of the tea. Um, and this was done with no acid at all. The tone of this blue is slightly different. It's slightly more yellow than the blue that we have otherwise, which 
could be the result of less pigment. Uh, it could be the result of what was left with the second brew. Uh, I used to do natural product extraction uh, as part of my PhD. And in part of that, sometimes when you're trying to isolate and get out a compound, you can find that over time, other things kind of come out in the extraction and that, so that could shift the color. So there's many chemistry reasons why this could happen, or again, it could just be a level of pigmentation thing. Now, I know some of you are wondering, but Rebecca, what about using a mordant? Would that give us more color? And the truth is, I don't know. Uh, in all of the comparisons I've done with and without mordant over the years, sometimes having an alum mordant present does shift the color. Sometimes it helps more pigment bind, but sometimes, depending on the type of pigment, it causes less pigment to bind. So again, there's a lot more complicated chemistry involved with various colored pigments that are found naturally in nature. The chemistry of all of them can be slightly different and they can behave differently when you're trying to dye yarn or other types of fiber. Jeanette, I would like to wish you a very, very happy birthday. I really hope that you love this yarn and really enjoy this video. If you at home would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner, go and check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And if you're hoping to target the video around a certain date, like a birthday, as a gift for someone, make sure you reach out to me in advance so we can check availability. But in general, if you're interested in being a lab partner and have a specific idea for a video or experiment, that you would like to see, uh, reach out to me in advance because sometimes it's very possible and other times it might not be. So I always recommend having a little conversation with me first. But again, Jeanette, happy birthday and thank you so much for being my lab partner. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I think I had this tea on hand for almost a year before I filmed this video. I both enjoy natural dyeing videos, but I also, I'm hesitant to do them because a lot of times I'm kind of underwhelmed by the results and so it's really invigorating to have a result like this that is so interesting and fun and that inspires me to go ahead and try a lot more. I believe I already shared a video this year of looking back at some of the natural dyeing videos I never made and hopefully, well hopefully we will turn some leaves and uh, use some leaves in 2023. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.